What's up, guys? This is DDP back with another edition of the Mavs Minute. Now, the Mavericks pulled the deal at the trade deadline, acquiring JJ Redick from the New Orleans Pelicans. They also acquired Nicola Melli. I don't have as much on him as I do in terms of knowledge base on Redick, but I do know he was much better in Europe, had a pretty good year with the Pelicans as a rookie, and then kind of regressed since then but he is a capable three-point shooter obviously JJ Redick is like a 41 42 percent career three-point shooter he is 36 years old he is an expiring deal the expectation was that he was going to be bought out by the Pelicans and then signing with the Nets so this is not where he wanted to be so that might be a factor although uh, Callie Kaplan actually said that he got calls from Luca Donnie Nelson and Dirk that has since made him more excited about Dallas. So maybe it could be a fit there. The thing with Redick that's still up in the air is that he had a non-surgical procedure on his heel, I think early March, has not played. He's also having one of the worst years of his career, I think worst year since his third year in the league. And that was back when he was with the Orlando Magic, if I'm not mistaken. And he's been doing better you know, prior to the procedure, he was playing better and much more like his usual self that we've seen over the course of a 15-year career at this point. So it's interesting to see, like, we don't know exactly what we're going to get. We know on paper what we should get. And this team, to take just, this is what they gave up for it, to give just James Johnson, who was a 16 and a half, I think, million dollar expiring contract, uh, and Wes Awundu, as well as a second round pick, to flip that for bolstering your shooting depth is really a good move. Now, is it the explosive move, the big move people wanted, whether that was Victor Oladipo or, you know, Nikola Vucevic or Andre Drummond or anyone like that? No, no, it's not. And I think the Mavericks decided they didn't want to trade too many of their younger core guys and they were going to bank on bolstering the shooting touch. And so they're hoping that Redick, not just his shooting presence, but his kind of veteran leadership can help this team and develop some of these young guys. So we'll see there. Uh, one of J.J. Redick's current favorite players in the league is Luka. And, you know, J.J. Redick, I think if you want to look at another great point guard, Chris Paul's third most assists of his career to a single player is J.J. Redick with like 693. So... You know, he's obscenely good, not just as a three-point shooter in general in his career, but catch-and-shoot wide-open looks, almost automatic. And to have someone like Luka in an offense that, while it hasn't produced him at the same clip this year, the previous two years, was among the very best in the league at generating such looks, that should help. So I'm interested in that regard at what the possibility is with the J.J. Redick, but... Because of the heel, we don't know when he's going to play. And that's a big wild card at this stage. Like, not knowing how soon he's going to be available. It sounds like the Mavericks... I haven't seen verification of this. But that the Mavericks might have even waived the physical for him. I can't imagine that would be the case. Like, until I see that verified, I'm just going to take that as improbable. Like, I don't see how any deal gets done if that's the case but regardless whether he's good to go Saturday against the Pelicans his former team or it takes a little longer we'll have to see now whether Nicolo is good to go that'll be good this team needs to do something obviously they're coming off a loss to the Pacers in which they didn't play Luka which is kind of weird because it was already a couple days off so I don't know man I feel like this team is messing around way too much for a team that's kind of clinging to the eight seed, yeah, the West is a log jam, but they're kind of resting guys and knowing they're consistently taking L's in these games. Resting guys as if they have a lead, as if they can pad a lead or it's not going to make a difference to the standings. I think that's such a bad mentality here, and it just keeps biting them, and it seems like they're not making adjustments, so I'm incredibly frustrated by that. Hey, KP, shout out. You had a great game against the Pacers the other night and it shows you know when he has to be the guy in spot duty when Luca's not playing he can still do it from time to time it's just a matter of can you get him and Luca going together and you know the onus in that is on Luca as much as it is on KP 
but we'll see. We'll see what this team is able to do. I still think they have major weaknesses they could not address or rather just chose not to address strategically. The team has been playing better. If you look at the Mavericks offensive and defensive rankings the past 15 games, they are tremendously better. Top 10 in both categories, and that's great, but it is a smaller sample size of 15 games. It's not you know, it's not over half the season or something that we're talking about. It just kind of goes to show we still don't quite know what this team is. And now that they've made this trade that should bolster three-point shooting, you think, hey, this, this could get a lot better. But they're already shooting the ball very well in that sample size. So getting a solid grasp on what we're looking at, not super easy at this point. But we'll have to keep an eye out, man. We'll see what they can do. All I know is okay fine if you weren't gonna go for it in this trade deadline you better swing for the fences and you better not miss in free agency because you're i feel like you're playing a dangerous game when you're not going out and being bold i'm not saying be bold as in like go acquire andre drummond for a bunch of stuff to make sure you get him i'm not saying that i'm just saying i think you need to do you need to do something to make a substantial improvement on this team because we still don't know for sure if KP can be the constant everyday number two guy on this team. And so if you're not looking at addressing the number two role, you at the very least need a solid third option. And 36-year-old J.J. Redick, great of a shooter as he is, is not that guy. He's just not. I think he can be a major asset to this team if he's healthy and plays, sure. But the acquisition, for what you gave up, it's good. It is. And it's a guy that, had you not made that move, you were not going to get him in the buyout market. Even if it wasn't Brooklyn, he ultimately went to, even though all indications pointed to Brooklyn, you weren't going to win that bidding war. And when I say bidding war, I don't even mean like, hey, are you willing to spend the most money? He's made a ton of money in his career. The Sixers paid him an obscene amount of money. That's not what would have been driving him at this stage. It would have been going to the team with the most talent that he could possibly win a championship with, or at the very least, uh, you know, have a, a sizable role with. So we'll see, man. Uh, again, James Johnson and JJ, they're both expiring contracts. You swap them out. Wes Alundu, he's a nice role player, but he was not, he wasn't going to be able to do enough in Dallas for what they needed. So that and a second to go and get, uh, you know, two three-point shooters, one of which is a, you know, one of the all-time best three-point shooters. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. But age is my concern with J.J. Redick. I've not seen a lot of him this year, but I don't know. We'll see. But that's all the time I got for this video. Don't forget to drop dripe drop a like let's do that drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the dallas prospect until next time guys remember every legend was once a prospect peace